This is likely the most valuable piece of content that we have ever brought to you. I reached out to 10 New Orleans based photographers and asked them what questions they wished you, their potential clients, would ask during the initial interview. From the group's answers, I created this video, which will tell you the most important questions to ask when hiring a wedding photographer. I'm Adrian, wedding coordinator and founder of Uncommon Camellia Weddings. If you are planning your own wedding, this channel has all the tips and support you'll need. Subscribe. I'm doing this video because of a common concern I hear from both clients and photographers about what questions really need to be answered during an initial interview. From you guys, the people actually planning weddings, I hear that you don't really know what to ask. So you use question lists from places like The Knot or WeddingWire, Brides.com, all good places. But ultimately, you aren't sure if those questions will really give you the answer of whether this is the right photographer for your wedding. From photographers, I hear that you, their potential clients, ask many questions that do not actually help you find the best photographer. I've even heard that some clients miss out on valuable guidance because they're busy asking the wrong questions. What I've heard most wedding professionals agree upon is that we would like you, our clients, to have factual information that's relevant to this market. This way, you can make informed decisions that you will be 100% satisfied with. And that is why these busy rock star photographers stopped and gave their input on what you should ask in your photography interview. All right, you ready? We will start with Brandon Schwira of Existence Photography. Brandon suggests, rather than focusing on what questions to ask, instead take note of whether the photographer is asking the right questions and whether they are using the correct language. He says, as the expert, it is our job to guide you, our clients, through the process and the meat of the conversation. Although he really feels that photographers should be asking the questions, he humored me and gave me one of his favorite questions, which is this, what makes you different from other photographers? Okay, next I'm gonna share from Gabby Chapin with Gabby Chapin Photography. She says to always ask, what kind of editing is included? She shared that most professional wedding photographers have a streamlined process that includes standard editing adjustments like white balance, exposure, cropping for composition and color temperature, and black and white conversions. You may want to ask if there is an additional fee for the removal of distracting elements and other fine touch-ups like blemish or tattoo removal and even eye-opening for shots that catch a blinker. These kinds of edits are more labor intensive and often carry an additional fee. It's important to find out the details. Comment below if you agree that this is our best video yet. I'm so grateful to these photographers for sharing this advice with us. You can't get it anywhere else. Angelina Brocato and her husband Lyle created the Brocato Photography Collective. Angelina told me that most people know some of the basic questions to ask, like how long until we have the proofs, how many photographers, etc. But she says most people skip the questions about passion and purpose because they're so busy trying to check things off the list. She suggests these questions. What moves you about what you do? What's your favorite part of the wedding day? And if you could give us one bit of advice that we could carry with us into our wedding day, what would that be? And Angelina suggests that those might be good questions to ask all of your wedding professionals, and I would agree. Now I'll tell you the advice of Teresa Elizabeth with Teresa Elizabeth Photography. I want to credit Teresa with the motivation to finally create this video. We met up the first time at a networking event and immediately got to talking about the shortage of valuable information to clients that is relevant to their actual wedding market. Teresa has a super important question for you. Get a pen and write this one down. What is your process? for backing up photographs. She says, any professional wedding photographer should be able to walk you through the steps on how they protect your photographs from the time they are shooting up until photo delivery day. Your photographer should be backing up all photographs by shooting on two cards the night of your wedding in case one card is corrupted. As soon as they arrive home from the wedding, they should be saving them in three to four different places to ensure those precious moments are not lost. The only thing that could be worse than not loving your photographs is not seeing them at all because your photographer lost the photos. You may be thinking, oh, but what are the chances? Y'all, just this year I learned to surf and it included photography. Guess what? All my pictures were taken on a corrupted card and they were all lost. I honestly had never even heard of that till then. No worries, they took me out of the waves the next day and I still got my surf shots, but you really can't do that for your wedding. Teresa also reminds us to always ask, 
Do you have insurance? Emily Green of Emily Green Photo shared her advice on lighting. She said to ask, what is your ideal lighting situation and how comfortable are you with the lighting at my venue? Emily advised that you make photos a priority when it comes to timing, location, and lighting. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that later. But Matthew Foster of Matthew Foster Photography shared this. This is pretty interesting. Nationwide, wedding photos are bright and airy, and I do love that. But most New Orleans weddings are at least partly and sometimes entirely at night. He suggests this, ask to see a whole wedding gallery from your venue or one similar. Several of our photographers gave the same advice about seeing a full gallery at a similar venue. Matthew goes on to say that, shooting at night requires experience, skill, and special gear that not everyone possesses. If you have any part of your wedding that is at night or indoors, make sure you see some of that before booking. Matthew also gave this interesting insight. For some reason, it's the posed photos that get way more likes than the candid ones on Instagram. So that tends to be more of what I have on my Instagram page. It's maybe important to look at every photo that you fall in love with and think a second about how that shot was achieved. Was that a real moment or was it posed? And are you okay with being posed a little or not? He's sort of pointing you to think about the experience instead of just the gallery. Mike Lorette of Mike Lorette Photography shared a similar concern saying, thinking about lighting and discussing it with your photographer is important. I love the example he gave where a client asked him whether a single chandelier would be enough light for their nighttime photos. These are excellent concerns to bring up. He also emphasized the importance of this question, which of course we heavily agree with. Should we hire a planner or a coordinator? Mike advised that far too often when there isn't a wedding coordinator, the photographer has to be the one setting up timelines and moving the day along, and that's not what we should be focusing on. Right? I do think it's a good idea to ask other wedding professionals their opinion on the team you select. They can give you firsthand valuable input about who they really like to work with. Jen Menard of Jen Menard Photography also suggested seeing full galleries from weddings and from engagement sessions. She says, this leaves no room for misguided expectations or disappointment. You may see beautiful sunset portraits on their Instagram feed or blog, but what about all the candid guest shots you're hoping to receive? Or their skills to be able to shoot in different sorts of lighting situations. Back to lighting. Seeing full galleries is a great way to see if your potential photographer is able to handle photographing in a dark church or shooting with a flash during nighttime receptions, etc. She also suggested this question. This is new. What is your approach for shooting on the wedding day? This is what she means. She says, are you looking for someone who is more of a quiet fly on the wall, who photographs things peacefully as the day unfolds, or someone who will step up and stage things and help the day run? Maybe you're even looking for a mix of both. Everyone has different personalities and style preferences, so make sure to have them give you a rundown of how they operate to see if you're on the same page. Great advice, right? Josh Williams of Josh Williams Photography suggested these three questions. Do I get full rights to the photos? Do you give direction, similar to that approach question, and how long is the turnaround time? He and other photographers in this list, including Stephanie Go Bishop with Starling and Sage, said that this isn't discussed enough, that expectations are sometimes not in line with how long it actually takes. All right, y'all, and here is the final question from our 10th photographer, Stephanie. One I think you can't miss because it's about deciding what time you should set your ceremony and your reception. What do I need to do on my wedding day timeline? to give you the best opportunity to capture the best images. She goes on to say, so many times we're hired and we're expected to deliver what you see on our website in a very tight or tough situation, sometimes impossible due to timing. Unfortunately, we usually broach this topic when the certain time sensitive elements like the ceremony time are already set in stone and we can't change anything. So we have to work with what we can and do our best. I would love to be able to set the proper expectations from the beginning. Y'all, I don't know if you can find a list of questions that insightful, that helpful, that real. I've got to stop and thank this expert team of photographers for sharing such valuable information. Check out their social media pages and their websites listed in the notes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, New Orleans photographers. And to you, our viewers, thank you so much for tuning in. See you next week and happy wedding planning.